Hello, Mr. Danter. I'm Chief Constable Twinings. I'm sorry to make your acquaintance under such unfortunate circumstances. Sure. Let's talk about these circumstances of how you've dragged me here from the other side of the planet without even explaining why. I understand the way you're feeling, but unfortunately, we had to move quickly to guarantee your safety and make sure any evidence remains undisturbed. I don't like the truth kept away from me, Chief Constable. Would you please tell me what's going on? Certainly. Two nights ago, we found the body of a man who'd been brutally murdered. I'm very sorry to inform you that it was your uncle, Frank Danter. <laughs> and you brought me all the way here to tell me that? I'm sorry, Chief Constable, but you must have got the wrong person. My uncle's been dead for over ten years now. That's what they made you believe as a child. To tell the truth, your uncle has been working for the Vatican Secret Service for the last ten years. Uncle Frank was a sort of papal secret agent. <laughs> Listen, if this is a new kind of reality show, I've already wasted enough of my precious time listening to all of this. This is not a joke, Mr. Danter. And yes, if you wish to put it like that, your uncle was indeed a secret agent of sorts. When he joined the small group of people, specially chosen to protect the Vatican's secrets ten years ago, he decided to fake his death, so that you and your family wouldn't be involved in the undercover work he was performing. Unfortunately, we believe his cover was blown, and this must have put him in mortal danger. If someone managed to find your uncle, we have reason to believe you might also be in danger as you are his only living relative. Although the way he was killed doesn't necessarily lead to the same assassin, your uncle's death is nonetheless similar to the five other murders that have been carried out quite recently. All the victims, including your uncle, were members of the Vatican Secret Service. We can't understand why, but they made your uncle's murder look like a robbery. They only took a few coins, and we're convinced that somebody's trying to hide the real reason behind all these murders of the Vatican's secret agents. Perhaps the newspapers have drawn too much attention to these murders, and the killers got scared. Seeing the way in which he killed the other victims, he doesn't seem to be the kind of person who'd be frightened by a few headlines. But tell me, if I'm in such danger, why have you brought me all the way here? And who knows I'm his nephew anyway? Do you at least know what this man wanted from my uncle and what he could want from me? Mr. Danter, I've already given you some highly classified information. Please don't ask me to go any further. As far as your safety is concerned, I can only say that, although I'm well aware of the risks you're running, I also realize that you're the only person who can help us to solve this case. Chief Inspector, I'm just a journalist. And as I told you before, I only ever saw my uncle when I was a child, and that was a long time before his death. I really don't see how I could be of any help to you. Two days before his death, your uncle put something in a safe deposit box at Heathrow Airport. This safe deposit box is also in your name. At the moment, our inquiries are at a dead end, and I admit that I'm hoping we'll be able to open the safe deposit box and find some new evidence inside it. Unfortunately, before we can open the box, we have to wait for a high-ranking CIA agent to arrive. So, I'll contact you in a few hours as soon as he gets here. For now, I'll give you the keys to your uncle's house. And don't worry, as the crime scene investigators have already been there and taken all they need. They even took your uncle's laptop to check it, but didn't find anything interesting so it's been put back again. You can stay there, but I'm afraid the water, gas and electricity have all been cut off. I've had your luggage sent there anyway. I could have booked you a hotel, but I prefer you to check your uncle's flat before going back to New York. You'll be escorted by two bodyguards who are waiting for you outside my office. Officer Coletti will join you later at your uncle's house to sort out a few formalities. Here's my visiting card. The funeral is being held tomorrow. Please excuse me, as I have some urgent business to attend to now. Goodbye.
Inspector Twinings has ordered us here to accompany you to Frank Data's flat and to protect you until someone takes you to the airport. Don't worry though, Officer Coletti will soon be here. Is this Officer Coletti a good policeman? One of the best in the murder squad. He's the inspector's right hand man. And he's solved every case he's worked on. He doesn't talk very much, and he's a bit on in his men, but it's results that count, right? How long will it take him to get here? Not long. He'll be here shortly. See you later, officer. Hey, I think I heard a noise coming from that group of plants. Ah, a frog! I'm not looking in there anymore. I had a very traumatic experience with frogs when I was little. It's just an ordinary bulletin board. Lost black cat. Characteristic, he loves licorice. Would everyone please remember to ignore the black umbrella? Ignore the what? Are they mad? Would everyone please remember to ignore... It's a strange black umbrella. Not even for a million dollars. Bills, propaganda, and a postcard from an old friend. Great. I'm stuck in London and I don't even have a map of the city with me. Ah, my suitcase. I must admit that the English police is certainly efficient. Incredible. It still seems to be working. It's Uncle Frank's old computer. A brand new laptop. It's a pile of papers and books. Maybe Uncle Frank was studying them for one of his investigations. And what do we have here? A map of London. This could be handy. I grew up in Wales and I don't know London very well. It's a map of London. Hello, Mr. Danta. I'm Lieutenant Coletti. Oh, at last. Chief Inspector Twenty said... Surprise, surprise, right? If you don't want to end up like the two agents down below, you better follow me to the airport and give me the contents of the safety deposit box. Hey, mate! Let's talk about this, okay? There's no need for you to point that thing at me. Personally, I don't give a damn either about this safe deposit box or whatever's going on. Lucky you. That means you'll soon forget about all this. Don't move, Coletti. I should have known a bastard like you would do something like this. Miss McKendall! What an honor. Right. Now that we've all introduced ourselves, can I put my hands down? Shut up! Shut up! Now, Coletti, put your gun down. The American's coming with me. Cat, 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 you and your father never give up, do you? The American can go with you now, but don't think this is the end of it. Hi, I'm Katrin McKendall. 
I'm the daughter of one of your Uncle Frank's old friends. I was here to see if I could find out anything about his murderer. When I saw the two dead policemen downstairs, and I heard Coletti's voice, you know the rest. Cat's whiskers. But is he really a police officer? Is he really a police officer? He certainly is, and he's also a high-ranking one. The only people who know that Coletti's the spy are me, you, my father, and a few trusted friends. You mean it was Coletti who sold the names of the Vatican Secret Service agents? Yes. In fact, he indirectly killed your uncle. But don't waste your time dirtying your hands with someone like him. Help me instead, please. I'm looking for a clue. Something that might help us guess what Frank had discovered. But the crime scene investigators already went over every inch of this place with a fine-tooth comb. What chance have we got of finding anything? I knew Frank better than anyone. During a case as important as this, he'd never have left evidence on his desk. And anyway, the crime scene squad is mostly made up of undergraduates who've joined just because they enjoy the TV series. Frank was one of us. He knew how to hide things from inexperienced eyes. A case as important as this? One of us? You're talking as if you really know something about all of this. Joe, your uncle was a member of the Legacy, and my father's the grand treasurer of the same association. The Legacy works with the Vatican to safeguard its members from attacks like the ones that have just happened. Although there are a few men of strength, like your uncle who are members, the Legacy is mostly made up of historians, cryptographers, scientists, and researchers of ancient arts like alchemy, or men with a profound knowledge of esotericism. Ah, ghosts, werewolves, and witches. No thanks. I've already had more than enough to do with them. Nothing of the sort. The legacy only operates in the field of science, even though the initial premise on which the research is based is often taken from folk tales or legends. The mission of the legacy is to protect the secrets of the Vatican, while at the same time unmasking untrue beliefs. So who exactly are you then? Are you trying to find the Philosopher's Stone? Although I'm highly qualified in this field, I'm actually only a renovator with an excellent knowledge of ancient languages. Well, if you think that's so funny, let me remind you, I've got a gun. Okay, okay. Just let me get in touch with Twinings and tell him what's going on. You don't still trust the police, do you? For all we know, Twinings might already have heard all about this and even be in on it. You're right. I'd better listen to you or else I'll be in a trap. I'm sure I'll regret having asked this later, but what are we going to do now? I'll check the garage. You have a look round here, and don't be taken in by appearances, as the associates of the Legacy are always using symbols. Their favorite hobbies are ancient puzzles and enigmas, so even if you think you've checked a place thoroughly, have a look again. I'm off now. See you later. Fine. But what are we looking for? Anything. Frank would never have left us without anything. It's one of the rules of the Legacy. Never leave dead ends for the other members. If we look carefully, I know we'll find something. You do want to find out why your uncle was killed, don't you? To tell you the truth, what I'm really interested in is going home and getting a good night's sleep. If I'm lucky enough, I might even get back in time for my interview. What kind of pathetic journalist are you? You're up to your eyes in a case involving Scotland Yard, the CIA, and the Vatican Secret Service? And you want to give it up? Along with the chance of winning the Pulitzer Prize? I knew I should have listened to Warren when he told me to carry on making documentaries for the ancient channel and Channel Earth. Ancient old mummies and monkeys picking fleas from one another never hurt anyone. You're quite right about the monkeys, but I'm not so sure about mummies. Tell me something. How come your eyes are two different colors? Were you that frightened when the gun was pointed at you? Ha ha ha. Very funny. What was that then? A touch of English wit? Maybe I've been living too long in the States and have lost my sense of humor. Okay, we'll get back to you some other time. Come on, let's hurry up. Let's hope he doesn't wake up for a couple of hours. My uncle's bookcase. It's full of books, encyclopedias, and dictionaries. Now that's strange. Those books are all messed up. Why should Uncle Frank have left these books in a mess? This is the sequence of the books that were all messed up in Uncle Frank's bookcase.
I remember music cradling me like a lullaby on those nights when I slept at my uncle's old house. Mozart, one of my uncle's favorites. I remember music cradling me like a lullaby on those nights when I slept at my uncle's old house. Nothing more than an ornament. This poor knight has lost his sword. Hey, when I was little, I asked Uncle Frank a lot of times. Uncle Frank, where's the sword of this poor knight gone to? It's an old grandfather clock. I think I remember that Uncle Frank had one of these in his old house, but I'm not sure. It seems broken. It stopped at 1010. I remember when I was little and I used to ask, Uncle Frank, why is your grandfather clock always at 555? Strangely, Frank never wanted to repair this clock. Why would he do something like that? This picture is really wonderful. And what's this? Looks like a tin of tuna. Okay then, why not? A tasty tin of tuna. Kitty, what's the problem? Are you hungry, perhaps? What a strange cat. so much it must be hungry. Oh, now this is more like Uncle Frank's idea of technology. Wait a sec. There's something hidden behind there. And what's this? I've never seen a fishing trophy like this. It seems ancient. Maybe I'd better not leave it where anybody could find it. A mysterious device. It looks ancient. There's a mechanism with five Roman numerals, just like the five books on Frank's bookcase. This way I can select the numerals.
Aha! It opened! It looks so ancient, I'm nearly afraid to touch it. Looks like young Larry's still continuing with his works of art. It's incredible. Even the cupboard in Frank's garage are neat and tidy. What's that flicker? If I remember well, these are the keys for Frank's motorbike, as long as it doesn't fall to pieces. These are the keys of Frank's roaring motorbike. Do these mean anything to you? Well, they're symbols, perhaps from an ancient language, but they're not Latin or Greek. And they certainly don't seem to be Asian. You're not telling me you can speak those ancient languages. I can't speak them, but I can translate them. Come on, let's get out of here. I've found the keys to your uncle's motorbike. I'll take you to my father. He'll know how to decipher that piece of parchment. You found the keys? But how did you get here previously? By bus, of course. What a stupid question. <laughs> 